Hey, welcome back. It's now time to discuss what happened today in history many years ago. And today, January 26, in 1926, 86 years ago, uh, one man made it possible for you to watch us on TV right now. His name is John Logie Bird because he gave a first demonstration of the world's first television system in front of 50 scientists in London. Bird was a Scottish inventor. He was an electrical engineer. He was an inventor. He also invented the first publicly demonstrated color television system and the first purely electronic color television picture tube. He eventually developed and founded the Bird Television Development Company, BTDC, which achieved the first transatlantic television transmission. This information was transmitted by cable to a screen where it showed up as a low resolution pattern of light and Dark. The first television program that he showed uh, was of a ventriloquist and the dummies, which he operated in front of a camera uh, apparatus out of view of the audience. Now, Bird based his television on the work of Paul Nipko. He was a German scientist who patented his ideas for a complete television system in 1884. Now, uh, Bird really did accomplish a lot. He usually used a scan rate of five pictures per second, improved this to 12.5 pictures per second, uh, then this was in about 1927. He, he did that demonstration of a TV system. It could scan and display live moving images. And I mean, the BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation, you know, later inaugurated regular high definition public broadcast in London in 1936. And uh, in 2015, Bird was inaugurated into the Scottish Engineering Hall of Fame for that remarkable achievement. What do you think it was the first thing that was shown on TV back then? I've, I've heard a lot. I've heard about a train. I've heard so <laughs> many <laughs> weird things. Must be really weird. Maybe uh, the new masquerade or um, um, stuff like that. I don't know. I, I was thinking of, uh, what's this thing called? Willy Willy. That's, what, what was that program? I can't remember what it was now. Anyway, um, that was from 1926. Yes, 1926. So we're going to move a lot further down and, of course, um, or upwards rather, to 2006. And, that, and this uh, next story is really about an author and a TV host, or, you know, um, one of the most popular, one of the richest black women in the world, Oprah Winfrey. Um, on this day in 2006, Oprah Winfrey confronted an author, James Frey, about fabrications that he had, you know, put in his book titled A Million Little People pieces. It was a, a memoir basically about addiction and recovery that Oprah Winfrey at that time spoke about extensively on her program and said it was one of her favorite pieces. Um, um, she, well, she described it as one of her favorite pieces, uh, pieces, basically. It was published in 2003 as James Frey's very first book. He, in that book, described his very, very, very terrible experiences with addiction to drugs and alcohol. And, of course, his time that he spent at a supposed treatment center. Um, he first of all appeared in his, in, on, on uh, the Oprah Winfrey show to promote the book, which, uh, of course, uh, she had spoken about a lot and, of course, talked about how amazed she was about the book. But later on, in 2006, a smoking gun, smoking gun website published an expose claiming court records and police reports um, showed that a lot of the things that he had stated in the book were all lies. And so it was on this day that he appeared for the second time on the Oprah Winfrey show, and she questioned him and first of all said to him, it is difficult for me to talk to you because I feel really duped, but more importantly, I feel like you betrayed millions of readers. He eventually, of course, confessed and said that some of the things that he wrote in the book were mostly exaggerations. He never spent 87 days in jail, like he had stated. It was only actually a few hours, and he never really had the drug and alcohol addiction that he had you know, written about in the book. Um, and so, yeah, it, it was um, a complete disaster. Um, his uh, publishing company dropped him, and a, a, couple, a couple of other people who had signed him up for endorsements had also uh, dropped him um, as um, one of the ambassadors um, on this day in 2006. Um, it's not uncommon that um, some of the stories that we read off, you know, are fictional. 
Um, it's not uncommon that, of course, people like to go over the edge to make their stories even more interesting. Um, but he, I think what made his own um, a little different was the fact that it was supposed to be a memoir and that was um, expected to be honest and true stories about himself and what he dealt with to help other people. But when you lie, um, yeah, you have to be called out at some so point. So sad, so sad. <laughs> so yes, anyway. that's about the man James Frey and what he had to deal with. And uh, of course, um, Oprah Winfrey confronting him on her show on this day in 2006. That's yes. what we have for you. And uh, yes, whenever you turn on your TV, just say a quick thank you to John Bird for making that invention possible. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, we're going to break here and we'll return to go into our first topical issue of the day regarding the ban on open grazing, underage grazing and night grazing in southwest states. Do stay with us. <laughs> 